Today I have five rustic cottage decor DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. For the first project, we have a fall frame wreath. So I've got some rhythm, ribbon here. Some of it is thrifted and some is from Dollar Tree. You know, just whatever pretty fall colors you like. I have a little scrap of foam and some floral wire. I have a, a uh, foliage pick here that it's gonna coordinate with my beautiful dahlia. And this was thrifted. And then I have some of these pretty picks too that were thrifted. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous picture frame that I thought would be perfect for a fall project. So we are going to use this as our base. So normally a picture frame has these little, some type of uh, hooks or little switches or whatever you want to call them that actually close the backing on and the glass in so that it doesn't come loose. But since we don't have those pieces, we're just going to glue them down and get them out of the way. All right, so now I'm going to decide where I want to put my picks. I think you could use some wheat picks from Dollar Tree and those would be beautiful here. Just anything that you can find, you can use Dollar Tree or thrift it or take something old apart and use it. So I think I want it to go this way, kind of an L shape. I'm going to trim down that piece of foam just into a smaller section so that it will sit right here on my frame. Now at first I decided to wire this down. So I took my floor wire and I just wrapped it through the openings in the frame and just decided to go around the foam. Problem with this is it doesn't sit flat because the frame has so many little divots and bumps and indentions in it. So I decided to just use my glue gun and just put a little bit of glue here and there. I did not use Gorilla Glue because I want to be sure I can clean this up and take it off to use it again later. But if you want yours to be permanent, you could use Gorilla Glue here or some type of a super glue. Okay, so I have trimmed down my little picks that are going to be our first layer. I'm going to put the first one right in the top. I want it to be a little bit higher than the frame or level with the frame, whichever way you choose. And then I'm going to take this one, going to find the pretty side, and then I'm going to put it right along the bottom of the frame. And I like how it kind of spills downward. It's really pretty to me. So I want to use these green leaves from this flower and the head of this pretty flower on this project. Just going to pull it apart. Okay, take those little pieces of greenery and just poke those right in the foam. If you don't have any pieces of greenery with your flower, not a problem, just grab some leaves. Whatever leaves you find that you like, just use those there. Then I'm going to cut down my foliage pick. And I want to cut these in a varying uh, amount of heights. So some will be short and some will have longer stems. Starting toward the top, I am going to add one pick right in front of where we put our first picks down. And then I'm going to take another one and go kind of in an angle. So top left and then bottom right. And then I'm going to put a taller one right up top. You'll see just a second what I did here. I'm going to pull it down for you. Right here, you can see it's kind of at an angle, gives a little interest. And then I'm just going to continue to go around. So now I'm in the other bottom corner. I like these because they have those little like dried seed pods, look like little seed pods to me. But anything with acorns or berries would be really pretty as well. Use what you have. So continuing along, I'm just going to add these in where I feel like they look good. I don't want to lay anything completely flat. You can bend your wire. That's totally fine. That helps give you a little height so that things aren't just completely flat. Then I'm going to add some hot glue and press down on the foam. And because this is this foam, uh, it doesn't really stick that well with glue. It tends to melt. So I'm just going to take some of these pins that I have and I'm just going to kind of Press those down into the foam to help secure the glue and the foam together. Just press it into that plastic underneath and the base of the flower, and that's going to help hold it in, kind of at an angle, like you would do hairpins. My video schedule is Mondays and Thursdays at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Now we're going to work on the bow for this. I'm using my bow maker that I made myself. I'll link that video for you if you'd like to try to make your own. 
And I'm just going to take this wired ribbon. That's the important thing here. You want wired ribbon for this kind of a bow. I'm going to flip it over so that the pretty side is always facing upward. I just kind of fold it in half, put those two wired edges together and slide it down. It seems to work best for me when making my bows. And I'm just going to make sure that both of these loops in the bow are the same length. I'm going to do this regular speed for you so you see how long it takes me to do it. So if you do it and it takes you a while, don't worry about it, right? We're not perfect here and we're not trying to be perfect. We're just trying to craft something beautiful, right? Okay, so I have one tail down, one tail up. I'm going to trim it off. Then we're going to go to the next ribbon. I want to sandwich that beautiful Dollar Tree ribbon right in the middle. And you can see here, I'm going to check the ribbon out to see if there's a, a better side. And both sides are the same. So I don't have to twist anything here. All I have to do is put those wired edges together, slip it down in there, and then press it down. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Fold it over and then press it down. Now, the loops on this bow are going to be about an inch shorter than the loops on the bow underneath it. As we add layers of bow, we're gonna get them shorter and shorter. And so here's the last one. I've sped it up because it's the same exact thing as the bottom one. I'm gonna flip it over, keep that pretty side up, pinch it together, pull it through, making sure that it's a little bit shorter than the other one. You see the layers there, a little step down. Twist it in the middle, holding it still, and then we're going to do the next loop. You can also buy um, bow maker tools on Amazon, and I do believe I have one linked in my Amazon store. So if, there, if you're looking for anything that I show here on my videos, you're most likely to find them there. If not, let me know and I'll be glad to help you. I'm going to take a zip tie, squish it in underneath the bottom, zip it up tight, trim it off and then cut my dovetails. For some reason today, my dovetails were not behaving. Every time I would make a cut, they were rounding off. I don't know what was going on. Same thing happened here. I cut it just a bit too short, but you see how easy it is to fix that? No big deal. So now my favorite part is fluffing the bow. I'm just gonna start pulling the loops apart, pulling the tails apart. I've sped it up a little bit because, you know, y'all probably know how to do this part. But it really makes a difference in the way the bow looks. If you just leave it flat, you're just not going to have the same presentation that you would otherwise. All right, so now we know that the bow should go here, and I'm going to use this little floral pin. I'm going to stick it through the back of my ribbon, right by that little zip tie, and then I'm just going to press that up into the bottom of the foam, and you can secure that with a little bit of glue there if you would like. So I'm pressing it in and then fixing my bow back up because I squished it. I use the fluffing all during the process of making my bow, all during the process. I just like to do it. I like the way the material feels and I like the way it looks. It's just primping, making it pretty, right? And so at this point, you can go ahead and trim your tails a little shorter if you want. They don't have to be the same length. Go ahead and make some shorter, some longer. It gets extra interest and texture. And that's always a nice thing when you're making projects. Give something more for your eye to dance around, right? Very easy. Move it around however you like it. This is how it's going to look. Now there's a sawtooth hanger on the back, so you can just let it, just hang it with that. The next project is a sweater pumpkin floral. I love, love, love this one. So I got this at the thrift store about a year ago, and I've held on to it. I love that it's old and kind of stained looking. It's very rustic to me. Very rustic cottage. So this is my 18 inch ruler and you can see that this is about 17 inches long and about seven inches across just for reference look at these beautiful dollar tree sweater pumpkins oh my goodness the orange and cream are the most beautiful thing i have ever seen really from dollar tree dollar 25 i don't even know how they made it that cheap i'm going to take some thrifted picks but you can get any picks that you like and these are also thrifted 
got some varying heights and textures, and I like that in my projects and my florals. If you have a regular box or planter, just use the same technique. So I'm gonna put two tall ones in the back and sort of spilling over the side. I'm gonna take two and put them kind of more at an angle, but in the corners in the front, so that they kind of spill forward a little bit. Just my preference, but you can do what you like. This gives me an idea of how tall and wide I want it to be. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my next greenery picks and put these in here. What are those little, what is that called? Those little poofy looking, it's like a Chinese lantern? Is that what they're called? I can't remember what they're called, but I love the texture of them in this project. Really nice, I thrifted them, but they had Target tags on them. So maybe they came from Target last year or the year before, I don't know. Okay, so I'm gonna start adding these in. Now they're on wooden picks. You can cut these wooden picks down with whatever type of tool you have if you would like. And I'm gonna add these in at varying heights. I'm gonna start kind of in the front and then I believe I'm gonna go to the back next. I'm gonna leave these a bit taller. I want the taller to be taller. I want the taller to be taller, uh-huh, than the back. You know what I mean. And then you can trim down the next ones you put in to give it sort of a step down look. And these kind of do allow you to bend them forward or to the side on those wooden picks. Just kind of lift them a little bit and twist them carefully. And um, that way they're not sticking straight up. You know, you can kind of do them to an angle, which again gives a little more interest when you look at it from all the sides. Look how gorgeous these are. Look at the colors together, y'all. That's really, I love this. I mean, I don't know if that's everybody's thing, those colors, but to me, that's just, that screams cottage to me. Beautiful, I love it. Okay, so then I decided I wanted to make it a little bit fuller. I'm gonna take a pick of foliage. Again, whatever you have, whatever you wanna use. I'm kind of going for the colors I already have. And I want to add just a little bit of that yellowy color in there too. So I've just cut these off again at varying heights. Some on uh, short stems and some on the longer stems because the ones that are longer will go in the back where the taller pumpkins are and the ones that are shorter will go in the front. And I'm gonna add those in wherever I feel like I need a little more fullness. And I like the way these florals look together. Really pretty. I couldn't find any blue pumpkins, but I'm on the lookout for some blue. Acorn door hanger. This one's easy. Pretty easy. A little time consuming. These are Dollar General acorns. Two different colors of brown, golden brown and regular brown. I have some spray paint and some rub-on transfers. I love when we can do a project that is fairly easy to do, but really changes the look of something. So we're gonna start off by taking off those little bows that were on there, picking all the glue off. You gotta get all that stuff off. Then they fold up very easily. I don't know if Dollar General has these this year or not, but I hope they do. I hope you can find something like this. And then these are just kind of soft, wiry hangers. I'm gonna take those off too. I'm gonna take my sandpaper because the grateful words on here are raised and I wanna get this off. And I'm going to use the sandpaper to rub it all down and just sand it as closely to a flat surface as I can possibly get it because I don't want anything to interfere with the grip between my little transfer and the base of this acorn. So I'm just filling it and wiping it off, getting all the dust off. I'm gonna take it outside and give it one coat of paint. And then I have some sealer that I'm gonna use on the galvanized part and let it dry. So there's one coat with the spray paint. I'm gonna take the lighter color of those brown, it's a golden brown, which actually, to me, looks like the color of an acorn, of an actual acorn. We have live oaks and a variety of oak trees in our yard. If you've seen some of my videos, you've kinda of had a look at what we have going on in our yard, and I really like this. 
you could leave it with one coat and just um, kind of go around your edges to make them look curved and that would be really nice or you can do two coats whatever you like now with that Mod Podge sealer underneath look how well this brown goes on and this is going to be one coat of brown on the tops of the acorns once everything is dry, you're going to choose whichever transfer from Dollar Tree that you like and go ahead and put that on. I'm kind of, I'm not measuring, but I'm going to eyeball it. I'm going to use my little tool here. It's to be used on vinyl, but it, use, it can be used on anything really. And I'm going to press this down and make sure that I thoroughly go over all the little areas here before I pull it up because I don't want to tear anything. And these... For me, these are really good transfers. I have not had a problem. I used them last year too, and I have not had a problem with them. Look at the beautiful color. It peeled off so nicely. Oh, I love it. You can seal this if you want to with some Mod Podge. If you plan on putting it outside, you could do that. So let's work on the other one. I'm going to use this home. They're like little wooden stickers. It's something else that I got at Dirt Cheap, and I believe it came from Target Dollar Spot or Bullseye's Playground, whatever you want to call it. Now this is curved, this acorn, so these are not gonna lay completely flat. The M and the pumpkin will lay flat, but the H is only gonna stick on one side. So use a little super glue if you have something like this, or make yours fit, you know, whatever you decide you wanna put. And then the E will just be pushed down on one side, and the other side will not be pushed down. You can use stickers for this if you need to, whatever you choose. You could use another transfer, no problem. So I'm just gonna take my sanding block and lightly go over so that you can see some of the galvanized bumps under here so that gives the texture back. And I'm gonna add it back on, very simply. You just push those little clasps down and I'm showing you here that I did take my tags off. I didn't mini pearl it this time, y'all. Who knows mini pearl? Raise your hand if you know mini pearl. That's right. I'm going way back. I'm throwing it way back. Shout out to everybody who gave me uh, super thanks. I really appreciate that. I don't always notice it immediately, but when I go back, I find them and I really do appreciate it. Okay, so now we're gonna make simple little bows. This a little ribbon came from Dollar Tree, as well as my jute that I'm using here. And I'm just gonna make a very simple bow with this. And I'm gonna tie it in two knots to make sure that it does not come undone. Cinch it up tightly in the middle so that it will stay in place when we are fluffing it up. I don't want my bow to be flat. I wanna give it some dimension. And that's easy enough to do. You just put your fingers in the loops and just pull them out and then glue it right on the top. I think the little bows are cute there. But you can put whatever you like or you can just leave them off all together. But I could see that little crack where they go together. I wanted to get rid of that. Now, I'm going to make a hanger that will attach both of these together. But allow you to hang it off of a doorknob. Or a if you have one of those racks that have the hooks on them, this would be cute there too. I'm going to put knots on each end of this rope that came from Dollar Tree. I'm going to press it down and then put a clamp on it because um, I want it to dry for sure. You do want to use a Gorilla Glue or a permanent glue here so that this doesn't pop off. And then after they are dried, I'll take my clamp off and these are ready to go. The next project is an embroidery harvest wreath or hanger, whatever you want to call it. So I got some of this beautiful red truck and pumpkin harvesty looking fabric from Dollar Tree. I have a little stick from Dollar Tree or a little piece of branch. And then I got this thrifted embroidery hoop. And I'm going to, this is 10 inches, just so you know for your reference. It will most definitely fit a piece of this fabric. In fact, a 12 inch will also um, fit this fabric. So I'm just going to unscrew it a little bit and I'm going to press it down I pull the wrinkles out before I get it completely tight so that it's nice and taut there. And then once it is screwed down tightly, I'm going to take some very sharp scissors. I like to lay mine completely on their side against the frame so I get a nice close cut. And I'm just going to go all the way around and trim that fabric off. 
using the corner of the fabric is going to allow us the opportunity to use this fabric for something else. We'll have plenty more left. So once it's done, I'm going to embellish the top and I'm taking some leaves, just showing you that I'm looking to see which ones I like best for color. Then I'm going to trim them off and glue them down on the wooden block part of the top. I'm going to use the same colors on the bottom. Then the next two colors that I add on the left and right will be the same color. This is not important, but if you want to know what I'm doing, this is how I'm doing it. And then I'm going to add the lighter color ones last and at a different position. Okay, so now let's make a ribbon. We're going to use some hula skirt and some ribbons. Use whatever you like. We're going to use seven inches. I'm going to use two strips of seven inch. These are wired rimmed, but it doesn't matter. Or wired edge, wired rim. We're not talking about glasses, are we? And then these don't have wire. I'm going to cut four pieces of those two smaller ones. And then I'm going to cut about seven inches of a handful of this. And then we're going to start making a little stack bow here. A little stack messy bow. I'm going to put these bigger ones on the bottom. And then start adding this hula skirt. This is a very economical way to get that straw or hay look. Um, without spending a lot of money buying little packages and it lays nice and straight it's very easy to work with so then I'm gonna keep on you don't have to do this in any type of a pattern it can be just willy-nilly grab whatever you want but you know like I've said before it's my brain it's how my brain works so this is what I'm doing but you can do it your way you can choose whatever type of ribbon you want. You can do a different bow if you like, but these messy bows to me are like perfect for harvest and fall because they just look so outdoors and they just remind me of harvest. Okay, now you're gonna take some of that jute. You're gonna pick up that stack from underneath. Just kind of hold on to it, pick up that thick ribbon on the bottom and then tie a couple of knots in the jute. If your ribbon starts to curl up on you, don't worry about it, just fix it. Just go ahead and fix it before you tie the second knot. Sometimes they'll overlap and flip around when you're trying to tie up. That's not a problem, especially with this type of bow. Then you can start fluffing up, pulling around, giving you some dovetails. You can cut them at a slant. You can leave them completely straight. You can cut some of these a little shorter than others, and you can take the opportunity to give it a haircut. You just trim down so everything looks about the same. This is a cute little messy bow, isn't it? I love it. And once I get it the way I like it, I am going to fluff it a little bit more, and then I can tie it to the top. You can make yours a little bit shorter if you don't want to cover your leaves up so much. So we had seven inch pieces, you could certainly do six or five inches if you wanted to make one smaller. I'm just gonna go around this screw that is in there that holds this frame together and tie this bow right in the middle. And then using that same tail from that knot, I'm gonna go ahead and make another knot. And this is how we're gonna hang it. Just like that, and you can trim it off. So now you can just fluff it out and shag it up and I want to go back now that I have it on and add a couple more leaves. You just kind of extend that shape down instead of having it look like, you know, a ball on top of a ball. So now, I think the shape's a little bit better. And I wanna add a little something right in the middle. And since we're working with pumpkins, let's grab up some little mini Dollar Tree pumpkins, whatever type that you like. Here's a couple and I'm going to just cut one of these so that it lays flat. I'm gonna cut it where the, I still have the stem on it. So I'm cutting like maybe a third of, of it off and just using my little utility knife here and then cutting that right off. Then I can add my hot glue and put it down in the center. You can skip this step or you could use a button or you could put a flower here or you could put another leaf here or whatever you like even a pine cone if you wanted to. So now I'm gonna take that piece of branch that came from Dollar Tree in a bag 
and I am going to put that right on top of that wood. It sits right there on top of that block perfectly. And there you have it. You could also stain that frame if you wanted to. That embroidery um, hoop if you wanted to. Or paint it. But I like the natural look. Next project is a branch can decor. Now this one is just too easy. So I've got this can. It's a leftover can from some seeds. And this is a placemat that I thrifted. It has sticks in it. Now you could probably get sticks out of your yard. You can get sticks from wherever. But just... Get a bunch of sticks that are bigger than your can. That's what you want to do. So if your can's three inches, maybe try some five inch stick pieces. You can even get them in a park on the side of the road. I'm gonna take some scrap burlap. This happens to be ribbon, but it doesn't have to be ribbon. And I'm gonna trim it down so that it is the little bit, just a little bit shorter than the sides of the can. And that way I can wrap it around the can without it hanging over on the top or the bottom. I'm going to start on the seam and just put it down. Mine was already cut at a slant. That, you don't have to do that, but it was already that way, so I'm, I'm just going to go with it. And then protect your fingers here if you're using hot temperature glue. And then continue around. And by the way, just because you have neuropathy or a little feeling in your fingers does not mean that you should not protect your fingers. You can still have damage and burns, and we don't want that to happen, right? We don't want to make the problems worse, so please protect yourself. I'm going to continue around on the top, because you don't have to do the top and the bottom. You can, you can just do the top, and it'll stay there perfectly for you. And you can trim off whatever you don't need and glue it down. Now that we have our base, we have something to securely glue our sticks onto. So I'm going to take my Gorilla Glue this time, and my glue gun, and I'm going to start fitting which sticks I think are gonna be the best on here. They are not all perfectly straight, and I am totally fine with that. I know I use that term a lot, but it's really true. I don't sweat that small stuff. I like things being different. I like things being unique. I like to make things my own. That's why that's the channel name. You know, I like to make it my own. So. I just encourage you to, if you don't like what I'm doing, you don't have to watch for one thing, but if you don't like it, you can just make it your own. You can just do what you like. You know, maybe you don't like using these natural sticks, so maybe you want to use popsicle sticks. I don't know. Whatever you think and you want to do is completely fine. So I'm just going to continue to add these around and add a little in the middle if it needs it. And going around and around. Look at all the different shapes and textures in the wood. I love that. Yes, I think it's perfect for fall. Definitely. So, now to embellish it, you can use some of this gorgeous ribbon from Dollar Tree. Or you can use, this is from Amazon actually. But they do have pieces of little trim that you can get. I want mine to slightly overlap. I know I'm out of range here. But slightly overlap where the can top is so that you don't see that top. And then I'm just going to glue it down. I'm just going to use my hot glue. I've got one side glued down already. And then I'm going to add a little bit of glue and put this next piece down. Then you can just trim it off at a slant, at, a, at an angle, square, however you want to do it. And so this is how it will look. Time consuming? Yes. But it's easy to do. Then whatever picks you like to put in the top, go ahead and put them in. These are thrifted. You can see it has stuff on it. I'm just going to bend those branches and stick it in the top. Love it. And that is a fall looking floral. I like it. I think it'll work very nicely with my rustic cottage decor. Which is a splash of gold. Here are our projects. So we have the beautiful little planter in the bottom. Love this one. This frame up here with the beautiful dahlia on it and the bow. The embroidery hoop. Please share this video if you like it and you think that somebody else would like it. I appreciate it so much. It helps my channel grow. I believe in you. I believe that you believe in me. I really do. There's a lot of love in this community and I feel it. I feel appreciated. And I'm so glad to be able to share these things with you. 
If they make me happy, I hope that they bring you some inspiration and make you happy as well. If you're not part of my YouTube family, I would love it if you would subscribe and stick around. I have so much more things to show you. I have more fall and Halloween is coming soon. And don't worry, no gross stuff on this channel. Just the fun stuff. I thank you today. I hope you find some joy. I appreciate you stopping by and I'll see you again soon. Bye.